This procedure allows us to determine patterns of gene expression in zebrafish embryos at high resolution. An antisense riboprobe is hybridized to the complementary target mRNA. The labeled riboprobe is recognized by an antibody that is conjugated to a peroxidase enzyme. A tyramide conjugated fluorophore is added to the embryos and the peroxidase converts the tyramide to a highly reactive compound leading to stable deposition of the fluorophore. Unbound tyramide is washed away, revealing the detailed subcellular pattern of mRNA distribution. Expression of a second gene can be observed using a distinctly labeled probe and a different tyramide fluorophore, allowing the detailed comparison of expression. Hi, I'm Tim Brend from the laboratory at Scott Holly in the Department of Molecular, Cellular and Developmental Biology at Yale University. Today we will show you a procedure for whole mount, high resolution, double fluorescent in situ hybridization of zebrafish embryos. In our laboratory, we use this procedure to study zebrafish segmentation. So let's get started. Begin the procedure with embryos that were fixed overnight in the cold in paraformaldehyde. Using a freshly thawed stock of paraformaldehyde for this fixation is critical for successful staining. Remove the fixing solution and wash the embryos at room temperature twice for 5 minutes each time in PBS. Next remove the chorions of the embryos. The embryos are placed in glass depression plates. Using watchmaker forceps, pull off the chorions. From now on, use a fire polished glass pasture pipette to transfer the embryos. Otherwise, the embryos will stick to the regular polypropylene tips. The dechlorinated embryos are transferred through a series of washes of increasing methanol concentration. The last wash is in 100% methanol. Lastly, the embryos are placed in fresh methanol and stored at minus 20 degrees overnight. The next day, transfer the embryos through a series of washes of decreasing methanol concentration. End with two 5-minute PBST buffer washes. Next, fix the embryos in paraformaldehyde for 20 minutes. End the short fixation with two 5-minute PBST washes. We are now ready to permeabilize the embryos. The fixed embryos are permeabilized by incubating them with proteinase K. Make sure to lay the microcentrifuge tube on its side. The length of the digestion step depends on the age of the embryo. For example, Somatogenesis stage embryos are incubated for 3 to 4 minutes. Rinse briefly in PBST and wash once in PBST for 5 minutes. Fix the embryos in paraformaldehyde. Finally, wash the embryos twice in PBST for 5 minutes. The embryos are now ready for hybridization with the RNA probes. Now that we've fixed and permeabilized the embryos, we begin the hybridization process with a 5 minute high minus incubation at 65 degrees Celsius. Remember to preheat the high minus solution before use. Next incubate the embryos in high plus for 1 hour. Again, remember to preheat the Hib Plus solution. Now remove most of the Hib Plus solution, but leave 50 microliters, making sure the embryos are completely submerged. Add one microliter of each probe and mix by gently flicking the tube. Cover the tubes with aluminum foil from now on, since the fluorescein is light sensitive, and incubate overnight at 65 degrees Celsius. The hybridization is done, so let's remove the excess probes. From now on, 
Detergent is eliminated in order to improve the staining. However, notice that the embryos become sticky in the absence of detergent. Wash twice with 50% formamide 2x SSC solution for 30 minutes each time. Wash once in 2x SSC solution for 15 minutes. Finally, wash twice with 0.2 times SSC for 30 minutes each time. Next we will visualize each probe. Now we can begin detection of the hybridized probes. Detect the fluorescein probe first because it is less stable and weaker than the digoxygenin probe. First block with 500 microliters of 2% blocking reagent in maleic acid buffer for one hour at room temperature. Next add the peroxidase conjugated antifluorescein antibody at a 1 to 500 dilution in the blocking solution. Incubate overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. Make sure to lay the microcentrifuge tube on its side. Next, start the detection using the Tyramide Signal Amplification System, or TSA. Tyramide is conjugated to a fluorophore. The horseradish peroxidase on the antibody converts the tyramide to a highly reactive intermediate. The reactive tyramide forms a covalent bond to residues in close proximity to the antibody, resulting in localized deposition of the fluorophore. Start with four 20-minute washes with 1x maleic acid buffer at room temperature. Wash twice in PBS. The fluorescein tyramide was previously dissolved in DMSO for storage. Give this TSA substrate a quick spin down. Next, dilute the TSA substrate 1 to 50 in the amplification diluent buffer. Add the solution to the embryos. and incubate for 45 minutes. Lay the microcentrifuge tube on its side during this incubation step. Transfer the embryos through a series of 10 minute washes of increasing methanol concentration. The last wash is 10 minutes in 100% methanol. Incubate for 30 minutes in a solution of 1% hydrogen peroxide to inactivate the peroxidase on the antibody. Otherwise, it may interfere with the detection of the digoxygenin probe. Transfer the embryos through a series of washes of decreasing methanol concentration. End with two 10-minute PBS buffer washes. This ensures that all of the methanol is removed. Antibody labeling of the digoxygenin probe starts with blocking, as with the previous antibody. Next add the anti-digoxygenin antibody at a 1 to 1000 dilution, lay the microcentrifuge tube on its side, and incubate overnight in the cold. The next day, wash at room temperature with maleic acid buffer, then with PBS. Quick spin the Psi-5 tyramide substrate, dilute it 1 to 50, and add it to the embryos. Incubate for 45 minutes, laying the tube on its side. Finally, wash three times in PBST. A final staining step with propidimiodide marks the nuclei. Start with two five minute washes in 2X SSC. Next, treat with RNase for 30 minutes at 37 degrees. Wash six times in 2X SSC at room temperature. And now, add the propidium iodide solution and stain for eight minutes. Wash six times in 2X SSC. Fix the embryos in paraformaldehyde for 20 minutes. And finally, two five minute washes in PBST. Mounting the embryos for viewing starts with two 10 minute incubations in 25% and 50% glycerol. Next, put the samples in 75% glycerol and incubate them overnight at 4 degrees Celsius. 
This overnight clearing step makes dissection of the embryos easier. Finally, dissect and remove the yolk from the embryos in order to reduce background fluorescence. Flat mount the embryos on a microscope slide and examine them under the microscope. These images show a single confocal section through the posterior tip of a zebrafish embryo at the 10 somite stage. The red staining shows delta C mRNA detected with a dig oxygen labeled probe and TSA Sci-5 reagent. The green staining represents HER1 mRNA detected with a fluorescein labeled probe and TSA fluorescein reagent. Nuclei stained with propidium iodide are colored blue. In a double stained embryo, regions of distinct or overlapping expression can be unambiguously determined. And of this procedure reveals subcellular localization of mRNA, as seen in these close-up views of HER1 staining. Active transcription of the gene is revealed by dots of staining in the nucleus. Other cells exhibit cytoplasmic localization of the mRNA. In the double stained embryo, we can see cells transcribing both genes or either gene separately. We've just shown you how to perform whole mount, high resolution, double fluorescent in situ hybridization of zebrafish embryos. When doing this procedure, it's important to remember that we first test our probes using standard alkaline phosphatase mediated staining. Probes that give a clean and strong signal will work well in fluorescent in situ. We have also successfully used immunolocalization of beta-catenin in place of the propidium iodide staining. When we perform this variation, we do the hybridization reactions at 55 degrees Celsius instead of 65. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.